Hello, my name is Mira and I am a lorekeeper in one of Yogstas libraries and today I wanted to talk about Southern Ulukita. For information on Northern Ulukita, you can check out the video that I put out on that last year. But much like in that video, I'll be introducing all of the sites and their knowledge blurbs from the topography section now that PA has actually added them for Southern Ulukita. With my Northern Ulukita video, I stuck to only the exploration nodes, but for this and all future Exploring Black Desert videos, I'll be covering all of the major landmarks, but just be aware that some of them are exploration nodes that you can just walk past to learn the knowledge, while others you have to talk to NPCs or interact with the environment. Anyway, without further ado, let us begin. We will start in our capital city in southern Ulukita, Muscar. To the northwest of Muscar lies Tremoran Hill and the City of the Dead. To the north is the Sazak Mercenary Camp, and to the northeast is Dark Seekers Retreat. Southwest of Muscar is the Izrahi Highlands. To the south is the village of Vilandir, and to the southeast uh, is the Shakhtar Wilds. Muscar was originally a refuge for those fleeing the oppressive rule in Medea and the Three Days of Darkness. These refugees would discover ruins in the harsh wasteland, which soon blossomed into Muscar. When Neruda Shen first arrived in Muscar, with his eyes set on the lands of Ulukita, the villagers were less than welcoming. <laughs> they feared a resurgence of the tyranny and darkness that they had just fled. However, the representatives of the Shen Merchant Guild reassured them, claiming the royal family had fallen and the guild was leading Medea towards a new era of prosperity. The guild began selling high-quality goods at affordable prices in Muscar, a change that was warmly received by the former refugees. Despite his reservations, the chief, Karim, could not sway the hearts of his people. Muscar swelled with refugees and immigrants employed in the blackstone mining industry, but this period of joy was fleeting, of course. It always is. The guild, exploiting its power and influence, like you do, inflated the prices of goods in Muscar and began dispatching mercenaries under the guise of the town's security. This is not even to mention the widespread sickness amongst those mining the blackstone. Which brings us to the blackstone mine. Located in the caverns surrounding Muscar is the source of both wealth and grief for the people of Ulukita. The mines are the Shen Merchant Guild's crown jewel. While the mines often unveil historical relics, the guild, blinded by the allure of the Blackstone's value, shows no inclination towards their preservation or study. The miners, wary of the Blackstone poisoning, echo this disregard. The interaction for this one is the biggest Blackstone obelisk in the deepest part of the mine. Muscar's water supply, like much of Ulakita, can be attributed to Lake Sephira. As one approaches Ulakita's heart, water's value skyrockets, as it would in any kind of desert environment. Lake Sephira cascades down Muscar's rugged cliffs, flowing from its pristine upstream to its downstream. While the upstream is arguably Ulakita's purest water, the challenge arises downstream in Muscar, where the water becomes tainted due to embedded blackstone. Capitalizing on this, the Shen Merchant Guild oversees the upstream's crystal clear waters, extracting lake management fees from Muzgar's inhabitants. Concurrently, they're diligently mining the downstream for any of the tiniest blackstone crystals. Greedy tokens. <laughs> Just to the northwest of Muzgar is Turba Farm, a small aloe farm run by a dedicated goblin named Sandor. Before the Shen Merchant Guild's dominance over Muzgar, Turba Farm played a crucial role in feeding its native inhabitants. But when the guild introduced affordable food, residents shifted towards purchasing those provisions with their mining earnings rather than tending to Turba Farm. This this transition led to Turbo Farm's land becoming desolate again. Consequently, Sandor's lovingly cultivated aloe has become the sole crop left thriving in Turbo Farm. Just to the north of Turba is the Lark Guard Post, which is overseen by Nidacron. The village's foremost gate, guarding the pathway from the Turandor Highlands to Muscar, is predominantly overseen by Sezek mercenaries, hired hands from the Shen Merchant Guild. The actual threats to the village are managed by the Sezek mercenary camp. Stationed at this post, the mercenaries vigilantly monitor for any contract breakers with the Merchant Guild or those attempting to flee the grueling conditions of Muscar. To the northeast of Muscar is the Dark Seekers Retreat. It is unclear when the Dark Seekers first established their presence in Ulukita. However, some suggest they 
were another faction or tribe that had close ties with the Uluans before Muscar fell into ruin. Given their ceaseless worship of darkness and night, it's believed that they were captivated by the potent and cruel nature of darkness during the three days of darkness that swept over Ulukita. One scholar put forth a fascinating theory. Ulukita is the land where the first Bereeds vanquished Kazarka to the holy flame that had consumed Kazarka instead, scattering his blood. Admiring his brilliance, the people of Medea followed the first king Bereeds to the northern part of Medea to settle. Meanwhile, southern Medea, tainted with corrupted blood and unable to yield fertile lands, was claimed by other factions. This suggests that some Kazarka worshippers from Serendia, drawn by the legendary tale, chose to settle and live in the land sprinkled with Kazarka's blood. Of course, without concrete evidence or historical records, most reactions to this theory are dismissive, criticizing the scholar for lacking credibility. Darkseeker's Retreat is one of the new monster zones for people with in-game gear. In the heart of Darkseeker's Retreat lies the sunken citadel. Interaction for it is up the stairs and near a doorway in a pile of bricks. The sunken citadel is said to be a building intended to host the Master of Darkness when the Eternal Darkness once again descends upon Ulukita. Abductees from Medea toil endlessly on its construction. However, with some workers being occasionally sacrificed during the Darkseeker's grim festivities, the citadel's completion remains an elusive goal. To the southeast of Darkseeker's retreat is Karasi Canyon. The actual interaction for this node is at the monolith to the southwest of the node marker on the world map. Nestled in the heart of Ulakita, Karasi Canyon can be described as the most intact relic. Some scholars believe that this was once a hub for Ulakita's ancient denizens, where they would converge to engage in lively debates, seeking profound wisdom. However, the Dark Seeker's conquest of these lands has eclipsed its scholarly past. Today, the canyon echoes not with debates, but with rituals that anticipate an encroaching eternal darkness. Located just to the east of the Karasi Canyon and to the west of Barhan Camp is the Gladios Inn. It follows an unpredictable schedule, bustling with life one moment and eerily vacant the next. Managed by the Shen Merchant Guild, they have an intriguing policy offering free food and drinks to Valencians. But knowing the guild never indulges in loss-making ventures, many believe this generosity is a ruse to extract secrets from the intoxicated soldiers. The interaction for this knowledge blurb is in the doorway of the inn. To the west of Karasi Canyon and Gladios Inn is the Barhan Camp. The Barhan Camp is a stronghold for the forces of Barhan Nesser, the Valencia army's second in command. Speculations abound as to why Nesser's troops are stationed in Ulukita, which is now part of Medea. Some suggest it's a show of strength due to national power disparities, while others whisper of a secret pact with Neruda Shen to seize control of a portion of Ulukita. The scale of the deployed forces suggests their presence is more about political intimidation than military operations. Yet what truly captivates the prince's mind remains a mystery, as he shows no intention of returning to Valencia any time soon. To the south of Barhan camp is Stofbeer, a small settlement connected to the bridge known as the Broken Star. Halfway across the Broken Bridge is a small shrine known as the Dawnlight Shrine, due to the belief that on the other side of the bridge lies the headquarters to the Knights of Dawn. Stofbeer is said to be a refuge to the descendants of the Knights of Dawn, who were disbanded in Calpheon. A handful of scholars dispatched by Prince Barhan, who is deeply fascinated by ancient ruins, are investigating the surroundings. Most people of Valandir choose to remain, holding on to the belief that the Knights of Dawn will return someday. Directly to the west of Stofbeer lies the town of Valandir in Valandir's castle. To the north, the scorching heat parches the throat, while the biting cold below stirs the soul, rendering Valandir a place of odd tranquility. According to the tales of the elders, Valandir is the land where the origin of Earth was discovered, and it's also a place where the proud descendants of the Night of Dawn reside. Despite the harsh environments, they lead a self-sufficient life, occasionally receiving aid from Shakhtar Pir, although the exact motives and identities of those behind this aid remain a mystery. With the help of Durgath, the chief of Dregan, and the local people, the Society of Equilibrium has been established in the Valandir Castle. It is known that the security here is handled by those hailing from Drekin as a result. To the slight northwest of Valandir is the sacred Shakhtar Wilds. While one might expect the monsters of Darkseeker's Retreat to make the Shakhtar Wilds a perilous place, uh, but surprisingly they, they don't. Perhaps due to the chill descending from the south, such creatures just don't venture deep into the wilds. Some speculate that the energy lingering in the land of the dawn wards off the dark energy, but according to a merchant who narrowly escaped the clutches of the dark seekers, it's all a figment of the imagination. West of Valandir and the Shakhtar Wilds, to the south 
of the City of the Dead and to the southwest of Muskar lies the Israhid Highlands and the towering Akshrad Mountains. The Akshrad Mountains, rising sharply as if to ward off unfamiliar outsiders, are a realm of fighting cold. The icy chill that cascades over the vast mountain range blankets the Israhid Highlands, creating a unique landscape where both extremes of cold and hot exist. The most striking feature is the presence of structures resembling altars that have retained their original form. While it's commonly believed to be a testing ground for the Knights of Dawn, no concrete evidence has been unearthed to confirm this. The southern valley in Ubukita, chilled by the Akshrad, is known as the Fries Snowfield. Fries Snowfield is also the hint in the topography section for the Akshrad Mountains knowledge entry, but you'll find the interaction for this by talking to an NPC in the Israhid Highlands named Demelt, just to the north of the exploration node for the Highlands. The Highlands is another one of the monster zones for people with in-game gear, so tread soft here. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this short tour of Southern Ulikita. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time here in the library. Beep.